Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Hope you're having a great day. And today I want to show you a few things with uh, texturing. So this will be kind of geared for comic book illustration. I'm using Manga Studio 5. And what this is going to be is, you know, just kind of like texturing for rocks, bricks, that kind of thing. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of tutorials out there for that. Maybe there is. Uh, but I figured I could show you a couple things that might help you with that. So I'll go ahead and create another layer here. And uh, we'll go to town. And uh, I'd also like to uh, do a little shout out for ComicArtDepot.com. Uh, they've been real supportive over there for uh, helping to promote some of my stuff. Uh, so give them a look if you don't mind. That's uh, ComicArtDepot.com. So, um, yeah, so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and show you a few different types of rock textures. And, you know... I'll do one that looks like kind of a little tombstone shape here. Um, one that looks like, you know, I don't know, a large rock formation or, you know, a couple of rock formations, whatever. Something like that. And what else? Uh, you know, you got a brick wall. Um, I guess that we could, really a brick wall. You could use the same kind of layout up here. And, uh, or, you know, I'll, I'll do something different. Let me see here. Um, and I guess a cliff. Let's do that. So we'll do like a, you know, a cliff. And when I always draw these cliffs, I think of, I think of Wiley Coyote and Warner Brothers back in the day. You know, the old school cartoons or whatever. Um, you know, for some reason, whenever I draw my cliffs, I picture that. So it's funny how things from your childhood always pop back up in your, your art. So, you know, maybe something like this, and then maybe there's like a back edging, or, you know, I'm sorry, like a back wall or whatever, like this is coming out from the cliff area. Cliff on a cliff kind of thing. And something like that. So, generally, I'll first define the shapes, okay? And then I'll get in there and start texturing. And the thing I want to show you is you know, how you can go about texturing this and get a better feel for how you would draw your own. So one of the things I do when doing this type of, you know, I almost picture that this is a, you know, maybe a tombstone or something like that, headstone or whatever. Uh, so, or it could be the, the broken up brick wall, like I was saying. The first thing I do, I usually take the side texturing and I'll do this kind of back and forth line work. And, you know, you'll see, I'll be really weak at first, really scribbly and, you know, kind of, just feeling it out, you know. You gotta always remember not to overdraw something in the beginning stages. You wanna really let it be fluid and, and you know, be forgiving to yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially in the beginning. Uh, you're still sketching and trying to find what looks cool to you. So I just kinda keep doing this and going back and forth. Start designating some, some uh, shadows in there. You know, picturing, essentially when I draw a shadow like that, I'm picturing that the formation is going out and then back down like this. So that's like kind of my, my shape that I'm seeing. Now it doesn't reflect that entirely on the edging yet, but I'm still already starting to think that, oh, it'd look cooler if it had a little bit of that going on. Because if not, it would look like just too smoothly, you know, cut of a stone. Now, I guess that's the other thing. If this was a, we'll say a... Uh, a new headstone or whatever, then it probably would be all nice smooth cuts and you really would, wouldn't want to overdo this texture like I'm doing here. Uh, but if you want to show age and kind of a decrepit effect to it, then you want to do more of this. So like that's why I like to do these rough edges over here. Then I start to draw in, you know, some cracks like this. I just kind of break that line work up. So at the edge of the crack where it starts, I've got this thicker line and then I break it up and kind of skip along the uh, surface of it. And to me that looks like, you know, like it, the crack is more, uh, the effect of the crack is stronger at its area of impact or whatever that is. And then it breaks away and maybe, you know, there's not as much here. And it's not to say that you always have to b make the line break away and then disappear. You could actually do it where it breaks away and it picks back up and then it gets thicker down to here. So now it looks like there's, you know, it's it's breaking away in, in a couple different parts. And for like a busted up, um, um, you know, city kind of thing, that would be perfect. You know, you want to show a lot of 
destruction and rubble and and so this is a good way to do that so you can just kind of play around and throw the, those lines and those shapes of shadows wherever you see fit now the other good thing to make stuff like this look more believable is l little pieces you know it doesn't have to be from this mass over here but and it doesn't have to even be you know it could be a totally different rock or whatever but all of a sudden by adding little pieces like this let me grab my hard erase here use my bracket keys to scale it down all of a sudden you've got you're casting more scale to the uh, back object so this is a great way to do that I mean you know a lot of little fun stuff that I'll try to do is I'll draw something like this and if I want to show the scale of this you know I'll put like a little this is gonna be a really bad mouse but I'll draw a little mouse in here you yeah, mouse he's got a got some bad hair going on there little tail or whatever that's a pretty bad mouse but you get what I'm saying so I'll do that too for one liven up the picture but also show scale um, control Z because that was an absolutely ugly mouse I don't want you guys judging me on that uh, that quick sketch there okay so you know a couple more cracks go crack crazy like that again I like always breaking them off to the side I don't like them all going in the you know if they all go in the same direction like I'm doing here it starts to look like lightning bolts and that's not what you want you want like um, a little bit of randomness there a couple little chiseled broken pieces uh, another thing I like to do on this type of stuff is I'll do a little bit of line work on the edges like this and what this signifies to me is that the edges are inconsistent and rough and textured so that's that's why I do that so even if you see like you know a little bit of line work down here you know I'm just trying to show that there's some some inconsistency to the shape there a little bit again for for scale we can bring some of that grass in front of uh, the object like this We can have some that's darker behind it, so it pushes this stuff forward. Something like that. And you can, you gotta remember too, sometimes you can just say fill all this in like this, right? And do a little bit of grass around it so it doesn't look so flat right there. And then come back with the uh, the white. You can hold Alt and select that or just... Actually, I'll show you the other way. Put that back to black. And then just hit X to go back and forth. So now I got the white and I can paint the negative grass effect like this in the front. Uh, somebody that was really masterful at doing this effect, there, there's a lot of artists that are good at this, but uh, one that I always point to is Bern Hogarth, um, Dynamic uh, Light and Shade, I believe. Let's see if I can see it on my bookshelf here. Yeah, I believe it's Dynamic Light and Shade by Bern Hogarth, but he does some really neat effects with positive, negative. Uh, and it, it's really important to learn that because that's kind of what comics are all about. Um, sure you got all these fancy color effects and everything that helps it along so you you don't have to do as much of this I guess but when it's done well and it's, this isn't a prime example of that but uh, when it's done well it's really it's really neat it really helps the artwork uh, pop mine came out looking a little too flat there but hopefully you get the point but you just kind of bounce back and forth with that effect and uh, it look it looks really really cool Okay, so what else would I do to this? I would randomize the edge of this part more, especially based on the way I'm shading here. So to me, I, the light source is going to be somewhere up here. And if I'm adding shadows on the bottom chiseled areas, um, then I want to show that a little bit with my edging here where those areas are recessed. Something like that. And a quick way to do that is just grab your eraser tool, soft erase some of this down, and then redraw it back in the way that you uh, you see fit. Okay. 
Okay, I want to bring that in real far, bring this one in real far. You know, just little things like that. Bring the shadow right to the edge there. Maybe a little bit more line work at the base here. That's it. Just keep, you know, doodling and with each new um, layer, you should be able to, or I guess uh, each new sketch layer over top, or whether or not you soft erase the original layer or add a layer, however you work, both work fine. Uh, you should be able to refine this and get it to look better and better and more realistic. Right, let's pan back. Eh, it's getting there. And then the other thing I would do, like I said, I'll do a lot of different texturing lines. You know, some just random look cool too. You know, you can just kind of randomly throw some sketch lines in there, different weights. And again, all that's doing is it's it's telling the viewer or it's uh, what I'm trying to convey. I bet, yeah, if I could talk here, what I'm trying to convey, I guess, is that it just isn't a perfect surface. So a couple, of, you know, you could try different little textures too. Because none of it has to be, you know, what anybody considers the norm, especially on something like this. You know, maybe thicker line weight at the base of the sides. This back edge should be a little more random too. Just kind of thicken the line in some areas. And you can even do grab the hard erase. A couple of line breaks up there. Now this effect that I'm doing right there, that's kind of neat to do whenever you're showing a light source. So if you have like a glare behind an object, you can do that to the, um, the top line and it kind of shows that a little bit better. And I just really want to rough up this, uh, this texture. So little things like that. So that's about where I would, you know, I obviously go on and on and on. Um, and you can texturize your little rocks up here. However, and obviously when you add the larger shadow, say there's a shadow coming off the larger stone, breaking up into the, uh, the texture of the ground, something like this, that's always what connects your object to its uh, ground plane, is that shadow. So it's really important to remember to always throw that stuff in there in some form or fashion because it really grounds the object and it gives it more um, solidarity. Okay, so now let's move on to this rock formation. And this one, I would picture this being like, say, a couple large, uh, you know, land masses, like mountains or whatever. Uh, and again, the way that you always convey that best uh, to show size and scale is to have other objects around it. So. If I take, let me grab like a little whips tool here. Oop. What am I doing? One second here. There we go. You gotta hold the shift key. Goodness. All right, something like that. One of the drawbacks to bouncing back and forth from various softwares is every now and then you get a little hiccup, but still worth it, I think, because I have certain tools uh, in each software that I really just love about that particular software. All right, so anyways, by adding that sun shape or moon shape or whatever it is, it now appears to make these look a bit larger, you know, in scale. Now, another way to do that is, you know, a little stick man up on the mountain. Okay, so now that mountain's really big, you know, as to where if I took the stick man and I put him here, then the mountain's not a mountain anymore. It's a, I don't know, snow pile or something. So that right there is how you show, you know, the scale of it. Now past that, another way that you do it 
is by the way that you add your, you know, I'll start adding some texture lines. Now, and forgive me, the, the beginning of this will probably look pretty crude. I just kind of randomly throw some lines and some scribbles in here, right? And, you know, I kind of picture that some of these shapes are coming out larger and towards the viewer. And, you know, feel free to use reference when you do this stuff because even though it's not something that you have to get perfect because of what it is, uh, for some reason it does stand out when it's not done correctly because, you know, we, I don't know, we acknowledge certain things that we see and, and our eye just immediately goes, that doesn't look right, you know, because we've stared at a bunch of mountains without actually, you know, picturing every detail of a mountain. We know what's wrong with it before we... Uh, you know, we have to glance at it any longer than a minute. We're already acknowledging something's wrong with it. So it's it's really easy to make stuff like this look incorrect. And that's where your reference is going to help you get a better understanding of that. So at first I'll just kind of scribble in some shapes and, you know, it's looking pretty bad. Um, but as you keep progressing, you, know, you start seeing into the shapes a little bit more. And like I said, one of the things that I try to picture, if I did... Let's say if I did this style of texturing the whole way through, which I kind of did, but not, you know, I broke it up a little bit over here. Uh, it's going to look very flat and very boring. So the ones that will tend to make it look better are the shapes that, you know, come out like this, some weird kind of shape here, maybe some other weird shapes here that look like they're stepping out. And this is how you start building a little bit of depth into that structure. And I like doing this in the sketch because... You know, if I try to draw this real nice and clean right off the start, it tends to look overly structured and boring and something gets lost in the translation. So I sketch it real scribbly like this so that, you know, it's uh, nothing, set, <laughs> nothing, set, nothing is set in stone, so to speak. I'm just basically feeling it out. So move these lines around a bit, just playing around with it. You know, to me, this is starting to look more appealing than this over here now. I need both textures. I need a variety of texture because that's the other thing you'll notice by studying rock formations that they have a lot of variety to them. So, yeah, but I, I need a little bit more over here. So what I'm going to do here is try to bring something out this way. Again, I'm not trying to copy the shapes over here because I... I want some variety, maybe some smaller rubble type shapes at the base will add to the scale of this uh, rock formation. And that's the other thing, is to break stuff up periodically, randomly. Um, the other thing that looks bad about this is it looks a little bit too straight here. The only reason you're ever going to get a straight line across the base of a mountain is if there's uh, you know, something in the foreground element that's doing that, like maybe some small sloping hills or some tree lines but it's never going to be a straight line um, so you got to be careful of that and there's the annoying cat coming up to say hi gotta love him he like, I think he knows when I'm recording, and he just comes up and meows just to get his little claim to fame there. Reminds me of Cartman from South Park. Kitty back cat I. Sorry. If anybody watches that crazy, horrible show. Okay. Let's see here. So again, trying to just roughen this up a bit, add some more texturing, randomization. I don't think that's a word, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so it's, it's starting to work. I mean, it still looks a bit boring, but with with each new, you know, like I said, with each new layering of shading and drawing, uh, you'll also be able to find areas and fix it. Um, probably start doing some uh, texture lines that go off to the other side. 
like that. And now I don't do that over every aspect of the, uh, the mountain here. I just kind of pick and choose some areas. And the reason being is if you overdo it, it looks uh, too repetitive and, and boring. So you just kind of choose some areas, throw that kind of stuff in, move around. You know, just don't overdo it. It's real easy to overdo something like this because you kind of get in the habit. You know, you, it's almost like if you find something that looks good, you want to just put it everywhere. Well, that problem with that is that it only looks good when it's not overly done. So you got to be real careful of that. Okay. Now the other thing, and I haven't detailed this side over here, but the other thing I want to address before I get too far Obviously, the light source, whether it be a moon or a sun, is off to the left there, right? So, the other thing to do that's real important with this kind of uh, formation is to immediately draw in some kind of shape of shadow. Now, what I would picture is the shape of shadow being on the side of this rock, like this. You know, maybe it doesn't hit the uh, face of this rock too much down the side of here, you know. We'll say somewhere like this, if you can see that line. So I'm kind of cutting it in half, right? And then on the back side here, I usually will take the line and bounce it around some of these shapes of the rock. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm defining a secondary light source. I'm picturing that the bulk of the shadow is right through here. Something like that. Again, this is still the sketch mode, so I'm just kind of drawing these in. This isn't the actual shadow yet. It'll give me an idea to work from. So there's my shape of shadow on this uh, rock formation. I've got a secondary light source and I, I like dual light sources. The reason being is that you can go back when you color you can always do something neat in there and if you notice you'll see that a lot of times in in reality anyways. It's almost it's very rare that there's just one light source um, and the reason for that is almost everything bounces light around. So you just kind of get secondary light sources, even in nature, where you'd say, well, the only light source is the sun. Yeah, but you're, what this is, is bounced light. So keep that in mind, too. And then you can, you know, pick a, a few of the larger masses like that and and shade some of those into dark. You know, maybe, the, maybe even this one's large enough to have a bit of a shadow there. Uh, and then, again, about the thing about being too repetitious, don't do it to every se segregated or separated rock. That would, uh, again, it would lessen the effect of the overall shadow. You can do a little bit more shading. You can do little bits of uh, texturing, whatever. But don't get in there and go, shadow on this rock, shadow on this rock, shadow on that. It, it just, yeah, it's, a, it's a style choice. I wouldn't do that. You could do it if you think it looks cool. All right, so same thing over here. I would define, I'm going out of order, but I would define a secondary light source a little bit like that. Then I would also maybe keep in mind that this larger rock formation, if it's in, well, it is in front of this one, it would cast a bit of a shadow like that onto this. So a lot of this one would be in shadow. You know, something like that. And then I'll go in there and just add a little bit of texturing. Like so. Okay. So that, that should give you the overall information of how I would attack this. You know, and then I'll do some kind of shadow here for the, you know, the direction of the you know, the light source hitting across this large rock formation, casting another shadow on the landscape. So that's how I would construct that type of rock formation and, and do the texturing and overall do the shadowing. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, just to speed this up, I'm going to go ahead and that's, that gives you the essential information on how to do that. I'm going to explain a little bit more on this one, but not much because it's kind of a, a similar aspect to this and this. And I'll do a quick brick texture. But then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and time lapse the rest of the drawing. Um, it'll expediate the process. It'll give you, you'll get to see everything uh, to a finality, but then you'll also 
you know, be able to get through this video a little bit quicker and sit in here for the next half hour while I doodle this. So, all right, so on this part, it's going to be about the same as the top right formation over there. Again, you're going to just kind of, you know, texturize some shapes in there, give it a nice variety. You could even do a little, little pieces that come out like this part does. And you would change the shape of the lines from that. Uh, to show scale on something like this, you could do, you know, again, some little shrubs. Um, you could do like a little branch with an eagle's nest coming out, you know, whatever. Something. Again, stuff like this is just nice because it shows scale. You can put a little shadow off it and it shows a little depth. Um, that's why I like doing little detail work like that because without it, the form just looks, you know, a little too basic and boring. Now, on something like this, I would do the cracks coming inward like this. And I don't know that there really needs to be cracks on the edges like this, but again, that cool texturing stuff I like to do that I think spawn rendering, I believe you call it. Oh, another quick uh, mention I want to do. This is shameless plug time. Dun, 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 shameless plug time. Um, the Blackstone Eternal comic is now being supported on Patreon. So I've got a Patreon page, Patreon forward slash Robert Marzullo. And uh, you can help support the production of the Blackstone comic. You know, it even helps me do more of this stuff, you know, for YouTube fans or whatever. I just, I do this regardless, you know. I don't make much on YouTube here, obviously, but... Um, I do it because I like to share with other artists, but the Patreon page, if it if it works out, which hopefully it does, uh, should also help me to produce more of this content. But it's mainly in place to help me get the book Blackstone Eternal out there. Uh, and it doesn't have to be, don't get on there and think you got to donate something big. I mean, it, it could be a buck. It doesn't matter. Every little bit helps. Um, and every little bit goes to the production of the book and, and me furthering the uh, the art here. So... If you can, cool. If not, don't feel bad about it. And um, I got rid of the other YouTube channel. It wasn't taken off. I had a paid channel going there for a minute. Uh, I didn't like it. It, it just, the, the setup was kind of wonky and um, didn't seem to fit, you know, with the way I like doing things. And I had a few comments that made me feel bad about it. You know, like people, you know, like that YouTube is free. And, and you know, and I get it. You know, it's it's kind of the the platform and what everybody's used to and the you know, and I don't want to try to change that. So it's like, you know what, I'll try the Patreon for the um, personal project. And if people want to support it, cool. If not, I'll continue to bring, you know, free videos. Well, free videos plus some ads here on, on YouTube land. So no worries. We'll just run it like that and see how it goes. So, because I, I do like helping out. And I don't want to make it where certain people can't access this information if they just can't afford it. Um, you know, that... That kind of makes me feel a little bit worse about what I'm doing here. I'm trying to uh, to help people, you know. And, and I, I love it, you know. I'm a YouTube addict. I, like, get on here and watch everything under the sun. Probably too much stuff. But it's like I love learning, and I can learn from so many different facets um, just by YouTube and or Googling it. And that's uh, it's pretty, darn, pretty darn neat. Pretty cool. So, yeah. So, that's how I would texture that out a bit. You know, you see I'm just rambling and... And texture now again with the light source let's say our light source is over here somewhere i would you know define a shape of shadow off this larger mass here i don't know what it would look like sometimes i get these wrong we'll say something like that and then i would obviously block in some heavier shadows over here but i wouldn't i wouldn't just you know do one big blacked out shape or nothing like that that would uh you know, it'd still give the form, but it would take away all the cool texturing and depth there. So, and lastly, before I go to the uh, time lapse portion, I will show you how I do brickwork. Now, keep in mind with digital, a really neat cheat, and I hate to say that, but it's 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 kind of cool. You can just do flat bricks, like uh, first I gotta figure out how to draw them. Okay, just do a bunch of bricks like like so. 
Now don't detail them yet, just do your brick um, pattern, right? And you can cheat, and co you can do one brick and copy and paste them, whatever. It's actually probably what I should have did. But, but this way I'll look a little bit more hand-drawn, which I'm always game for too. Um, okay, so you do like this pattern like this. Oh, I need another, another layer. The crazy cat returns. Kitty, get out of here. I'm going to play throw the kitty. Go on. Bad mama. No, I'm just kidding. I love the kitty. He's cool. I would never throw him. Ever. Tell him, kitty. I would never do that. Okay, so edit. Transform. Where's it at? Yeah, I'm sorry. Free transform. Okay. So now you got this brick texture and you can create this uh, and do it before you create all your cool little detailing textures and shadows. And you can just distort that into your wall shape. So it's really quick and easy to do that. You can even do the, the scale, uh, the really distorted field of view, whatever. Uh, so it's really easy to do that. And then once you've distorted it, then I would go through and do your added shapes and you know detail work whether or not you want to show the larger mortar joints by doing the separation of the bricks uh, cool thing that that looks neat on this type of uh, drawing I always do these like straight line shadows because well to me you know if there's if there's a bunch of buildings you're not going to get rounded shadows as much as you're going to get straight line shadows so I'll do like something like this you know shade it whatever For the bricks, I'll do like the little breaks in the bricks like this. You know, you can do a couple of cracks in them, whatever. And again, you're just texturizing and making something that looks interesting. Uh, to the viewer yourself, hopefully both. And just turn on some music, zone out, and do some drawing. Because it's fun. It's cool. And I got really no set way that I do this you know I mean I'm really just playing around with it and especially again and this is the rough you know kind of sketchy stage obviously um, so you just play with it and see what works and the only thing to keep in mind is not to make anything look too straight or too uh, overly um, structured because it it looks boring even with this stuff, even though bricks are kind of structured, uh, you know, get up close, take a look at them in high def or whatever, Google some HD wall texture, and you see a lot of little imperfections, and that's where the neat stuff is, that's where the, that's where the gold is, so you want to just kind of take notice of that stuff and then try to emulate it in line work, and give it your own style and your own feel. Those are looking really bad, but I'll get there. Another cool thing, too, is if they look overly uh, too blocky in shape, just take, like, the corners off or something, shade them down so it looks like the quarter, corners are maybe destroyed or whatever. Like this line. Zoom up so you can see what I'm talking about there. Way too clean, right? So just break that line up, add some cool little texturing. Maybe another shadow break in this brick over here and break all those lines up. Now somebody I can think of uh, that does this really well um, is David Finch. That dude does some really cool brick work. Um, really cool texturing of all kinds. He's just an amazing artist. But, um, you know, he never leaves stuff all, you know, he doesn't leave a whole lot of pretty lines, which I like. That. I mean, he does not his we, uh, we mean and he's women he does um, and that's about it you know he doesn't he's always got some grit to his stuff which I, I'm really impressed with so um, him and probably Todd McFarlane's the other one that, that does that really nice just always texturing always adding you know 
which I don't know that he draws anymore as much, but uh, when he was really all about his drawings, it was uh, it was really neat to see that. Everything was gritty, and, you know, he'd always scribble in just the right areas, you know, and make it look cool like that. So enough of me being a fanboy and promoting other artists. You know who else does it really well? Rob Marzullo. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Alright, so something like that, you know, again, I just keep going until I get it looking, you know, the right way. Um, another cool thing that you can do, you can take this line work here, and I'll do it when I time lapse this and I finish this out, and you do a kind of a more solid fill on these. And it's kind of a neat way to, to do the shadows on bricks. Gives kind of an eerie kind of vibe. And I'll show you that. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and time lapse this so this video will be unbearably long. Uh, so, yeah, if you can, check out the Patreon page. Uh, like us on Facebook and like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and watching my vids. More on the way very soon. This is Robert Marzullo saying thank you, keep drawing, keep having fun.